So, so Jen, tell us what, what does this IPO mean for the company and why do it right now? Yeah, so we have built this business from a single dress in a single situation to a full closet in the cloud that women use for every situation. Our mission has really always been to disrupt this multi-trillion dollar fashion industry and provide the world's first and largest shared designer closet. And we have been able to do that while empowering women to feel their best every day. You know, we're so proud that this IPO is actually a historic one for women. We're the first founder-led company to IPO with a female CEO, COO, and CFO. That is quite the milestone indeed. Now, Jennifer, looking at your S1, uh, there has been some bounce back since the depths of the pandemic, but your revenue is in decline and your subscriber count is below where it was before the pandemic. How do you address those potential concerns for investors? Yeah, well, our subscriber count is back up to nearly 100% of where it was at the end of 2019, as of the end of September. And we continue to experience fantastic momentum. We've also seen that the subscriber base has really diversified. So we're acquiring subscribers from more diverse geographies, more diverse household incomes, and for more diverse use cases. So 50% of her use cases now are for casual, everyday occasions. And frankly, you know, we've seen that women did not have to return to the office to return to rent the runway. 90% of our customers continue to work from home, but we've experienced this momentum where we're back up to 2019 levels. And so as women do return to an office, even if it's just a few days a week or return to a party, that's just continued upside for the business. As it relates to revenue growth, we actually grew revenue sequentially between Q1 and Q2 by 39%, and we're experiencing similar momentum now. So curious about that momentum going forward. I mean, you, you mentioned the getting dressed for going back to work. But when I think about the fact that people are going to be in more hybrid workforces and how there's a lot of uncertainty about that going forward, and also there is uncertainty about more COVID variants and what going to weddings or going to parties in the winter and into the spring will look like, how do you address that uncertainty and take that into account when you're making forecasts about what the, the business and consumer base is going to look like going forward? Yes, yeah, so remember, our customer uses us to get dressed 83 days per year, and 50% of those days now for, are for casual, everyday use cases. Everything from you know, wearing a fall coat around your neighborhood to everyday loungewear to you know, going on a last-minute trip. And so we have been very deliberate in expanding our assortment over the last few years and have actually been able to partner with the designer community to expand that assortment primarily on consignment via our Share by RTR channel, where we partner with our brands to revenue share on every single item that we rent. So that means that we're able to grow our business in a much more capital efficient way and that, than we ever have. But I guess my question is, do you think the potential addressable market, the, the whole number of people who might want to subscribe is smaller, just simply smaller now than it was pre-pandemic? I, I think the, the number of people who are open to putting their closet in the cloud has never been higher. If anything, this pandemic pushed us even more as consumers into sharing models, into valuing experiences over ownership, into valuing sustainability as a core tenant of how we're going to spend our money, and into thinking about the actual cost and financial value of every single purchase that we make. And so Rent the Runway really wins on all three of those measures. And we've seen that in our customer base. We're seeing that she's joining us now because this is a more sustainable way to get dressed. And she's able to get dressed with 20x her buying power. Now, during the pandemic, you did expand to move further into that sustainable uh, model by offering a resale option. But that is a very competitive space. You know, you have ThreadUp, the real, real. What's the opportunity you see there? And are there other businesses or other business lines you expect to launch? Yeah, resale for us is just an incredible new customer funnel into subscription. 
it's exactly how we look at our special event rental business, that it's a way to introduce a new customer to how valuable our assortment is and to how easy it is to come to rent the runway. And we've been very productive at converting former customers into subscribers. So every year we see about 50% of our subscribers are brand new to Rent the Runway and 50% are actually former customers of Rent the Runway, primarily from our special event rental business.